here to stay
Uh, it's been a testing couple of weeks and it doesn't get any easier tonight as MK Dons, one of the informed sides in League One, are in town. We simply have to show what we're made of, especially after the disappointment of Saturday against Oxford United. What's coming up in today's show? Where we will speak exclusively, as always, to manager Johnny Jackson. And we'll also chat to defender Sam Lavelle. We'll speak to Lauren Bruton, whose addicts are flying high in the FA Women's Championship. And we'll look back at Saturday's defeat against Oxford. Good to see Curbs with me tonight in the Charlton TV studio, presented by DNEL Limited. You OK, Curbs? Yeah, good. Good to see you. Good to see him. Great to see this man. So he gets his effort in. And Jake Forster-Kasky opens the scoring. Now on EK in the bounce here, he turns and EK goes to goal, comes out to Foster Kasky! And Sean has the equaliser. It's lovely football on this right hand side. It is a very warm welcome back to Jake Forster Kasky. Whose phone is that? I'm, I'm not, <laughs> not my ringtone. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure someone's, mine. someone's calling I'm you sure already. <laughs> Brilliant. Your second appearance it's on Charlton fire, TV. Tell, yeah. <laughs> How are you, Jake? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, I, I hope you are as well. Y your first appearance was against Atkinson wasn't it, the home game against uh, them back in October. So hopefully we have a bit more to shout about tonight. We'll go more in depth about your injury on a, a little bit later, but how much would you love to be out there right now? Yeah, it's, uh, I've said it previously when I was on here, it's tough when you, when you miss games and it's tough when you miss a large chunk of the season, especially when you see the boys in, in some of their games pre previously struggling. It's, it's hard because you just want to be out there helping out. Mm. MK Dons are a team you're familiar with. What was it, the 2015-16 season that you spent a season loan there? You keep an eye out still for them? Yeah, obviously I had two spells there. I had a, I had a really good time there, actually. I uh, enjoyed my time. It's a, it's a good club. They tried to play the right way. So, uh, yeah, I do look out for my former, former team. And they're going great guns curves as well, aren't they? Uh, off the back of a, a very good victory against Sunderland away there, they'll be feeling confident coming Absolutely. here. And especially after our result. Well, our last couple of results, and, and we have got some tough opposition. We had a couple of really tough games. Yeah, we're in the some, middle of a really yeah. tough fixture. <coughs> yeah, this, don't top we? teams, and you know we know that we're, we've got a game on tonight, and uh, we've got to show up. Yeah. I, I look, I thought like everybody about Saturday. It just seemed, that if you're Jacko, you're sitting. It's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse, wasn't it? And you know you just want the game to end. And now, two two or three days later, you've got another chance to bounce back. Yeah, the game's coming thick and fast in the month of February. Remember, we are streaming worldwide tonight. That includes the UK and Ireland. So if you haven't got your match pass yet, please get it as soon as you possibly can. OK, let's crack on, shall we? And I spoke to Jacko a little bit earlier, pitch side. Jacko, good to see you. Look, it was a difficult day on Saturday, of that there's no doubt. But do, do you learn a lot about the lads? And actually, do you learn a lot about yourself as well? Yeah, always learning uh, in, in victory and, uh, and probably more so in defeat as well. And it's about um, lessons to be learnt from that game, what we can take out of it, um, how we can improve. And also, obviously, the important thing is, you know, how we bounce back and what sort of uh, reaction that we get from it. Yeah, that's key, isn't it? What kind of reaction are you expecting from them? Well, I expect a big reaction from from my players and my uh, my squad and myself because that was, that was disappointing, wasn't it? And it, it, it hurt, uh, hurt me a lot. Uh, I know it hurt the players, it would have hurt the supporters as well. So, um, never nice, especially uh, on your own patch. Uh, this is football, this happens, you know. Um, it'll, it'll happen uh, to everyone in the game, and now it's about what you do um, in your next game. You've got an opportunity very quickly to, to get out there and prove a point and, uh, and make sure that that doesn't happen again. There's got to be at least one change, but what are the, the changes tonight? What is the team tonight? Yeah, a lot, lot of, change, lot of changes tonight. Some, some enforced, obviously, some down to, uh, down to, um, just obviously what I saw on Saturday, and uh, I think how, how we need to approach the game. So, uh, Lavelle, Famwo, Gunter comes into the team. Um, 
uh, Juan Castillo uh, has a debut as well, so quite a few changes in there. What have you said to him? Uh, well, he doesn't know his plan yet. I haven't told him <laughs> the team, so I, I haven't said anything. But obviously, we've done work yesterday on on uh, on MK and and obviously what we want as well. So he was he was heavily involved in that. So he'll have half a clue that he's playing, but I haven't I haven't told him yet. I'm sure he will. Uh, let's talk about MK Dons then, because they are playing exceptionally well. I had another good win uh, at the weekend. What are you expecting from them? Uh, tough test. They're a good side, obviously, top end of the league, play really good football, um, pass the ball really well, have a lot of possession in games. So, uh, obviously, got to be got to be ready for that. Uh, got to make sure that our shape and um, out of possession is, is important today, being nice and compact. And obviously, we, you know, we've shipped too many goals in the last few games, so that's something that we need to address. Um, but like every side, we'll have, we'll have weaknesses that we can expose, and that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, and just finally, apart from Saturday, things have been going really well here at the Valley. As always, what's the message to the fans coming? Just get behind the team. Yeah, obviously, it's, it's important that we give them something to shout about. And, and I thought we did that at the start of the game on Saturday. It actually started really brightly. Uh, and I think our start will be really important tonight because if they see the lads at it, they'll get behind the lads uh, as they always do. So it's important that we start on the front foot and, uh, and try and give a good showing. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, hoping for a good performance in all three points. And I have to say, the phone rang just a bit. And, and <laughs> how quickly did Curbs blame you there, Jake? His experience. His experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whose phone was it? I wouldn't have that ringtone. Oh, no, you were on ringtone. It's not cool enough. I don't know how to change it. To change I've, got, it? I've got, like, R&B or something. Oh, yeah? How to change it? I don't know how you change it. I just love the deflection straight away from the gaffer. Blame the player. You're still a, a player, of course. It. Let's have a look at tonight's team, shall we? Because it's half the team pretty much changed. Five changes in total. In comes Chris Gunter, Sam Lavelle, Akin Fainwo, Juan Castillo for his first start in a Charlton shirt and Mason Burstow up front. What do you think, Kerbs? Five changes. Well, we were saying earlier that, that in a normal scheme of things, if we weren't in the middle of this, or having this bad run, then perhaps Jacko could blood some players. Mm. You know, we could see some of the young players getting 90 minutes, not just coming on a sub. But he's got to arrest this run. And uh, the sooner he does that, the better. But I, I felt Lavelle had to come in. I mean, they're talking about that he might not be 100% and might not last the whole game. But if he lasts 60, 70 minutes, that's fine. We've got to get him fit because we know he's around next year. So he's kept with the three at the back and it's very, you know, vastly experience. And not much change really, is there, after that? You know, you've got the three midfield boys and we've got a debut for Castillo. Yeah. Tell us about him. Jake, obviously you've not been training with him because you're not training at the moment, but does he look like he's going to be a good player? I am training now. You're training with the team? Yeah, I've trained, uh, I've begun training, so um, he's very confident, um, very athletic. Obviously, he'll be looking to um, attack down that side and, you know, obviously you only see a little bits in training, you don't see everything, so I'm excited to see what he will bring to the team tonight. And it's great to see as well Daniel Carno and Tyrese Campbell on the bench. There's every chance of them coming well, on. I said earlier that, that perhaps the position the club's in at the moment, you know, we can't get to where we want to get to. We don't think we're there. Normally it's a time to blood some young players mm. and give them 90 minutes. But as I say, because of the run we're having at the moment, it's a bit difficult. But I don't think it'll be long. If we can pick up a couple of results and make ourselves absolutely secure, then why not? Put some young players in before the end of the season. Yeah, tell us a little bit about Tyrese and Daniel. Yeah, I saw them the other day. We was doing five sides and they looked really sharp. So, uh, like, the, like before, I'm just excited to see what they do. I think the whole team needs to show a reaction tonight mm. after the other night. And um, I think they're hungry to do that. They moved on quickly. So, uh, it's, a, it's a good chance to uh, show a reaction. OK, let's have a look at the league table. And we have to start with uh, the bottom half, because that's where we are. 16th following our defeat to Oxford. Cambridge's 2-0 win over Accrington. Saw them leapfrog us into 14th. And they were the only movers in the bottom half. Although Cheltenham stayed 15th after contesting that incredible 5-5 yeah. draw let's, against Wickham on let's Saturday. Let's not forget where we was when Jacko took over. Yeah. You know, I think we're forgetting that a little bit in, because of the run we're having at the moment. Um, but we was in that bottom four, weren't we? We were. Let's have a look at the top half. Well, we want to be. We're not going to be come the end of the night, but we might well be over the next few matches. Nice opponents, MK Dons are third. As we said earlier, the impressive win at Sunderland on Saturday. That results. A Bolton who are level on points with us 
after we beat Wimbledon here February 5th, they're now just seven points off the playoffs. They coincidentally beat Wimbledon 4 0 on Saturday to make it three wins in four. And they're making a playoff uh, shout, aren't they? I mean, right. it, that, that playoff, it looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah. The, the, the race. I'm looking, I'm looking at the size of some of them clubs. You know, we, we, we consider ourselves a big club, which we are in this league, but look at, look at some of them names. Yeah. Who's impressed you, Jake? I think we asked you early in the season, but we're two thirds in now. Wigan, I think they got the recruitment right, start of the season. MK, very good team who we're playing tonight. They, mm. they try to play football the right way. Obviously, Rotherham, every, seems like every time they're in this, this division, they, they do well and uh, really hard to beat. But there's teams probably all the way down to, to Bolton and possibly even Portsmouth that have all got a chance. So it's just... Who do you it's, fancy? Or Mac? No, no. To, oh. I think the front two are probably William Games and Anne Wigan. Yeah, I think that... Them, but who do you fancy to get in the playoffs late run? Look at Ipswich. And... I think Ipswich have picked up and momentum's just a massive thing in football. So I think they'll, I think they'll get in. Suddenly they're collapsing, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, it seems like a, a strange decision now, doesn't it? Yeah. What, what they've done. But yeah, look at the big clubs. Premier League clubs, Portsmouth, Bolton, Ipswich, Sheffield Wednesday, Sunderland. Tough. Pre 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 <laughs> it's very hard to pick, <laughs> especially for the, the playoff places. And let's have a look at the fixture list tonight because it is a full fixture list in League One. And Sheffield Wednesday, who we play on Saturday, travel to Fleetwood, who themselves are just outside the relegation zone. Wednesday, only outside the top six we saw there on goal difference. Gillingham host Wimbledon in a huge game at the bottom. Wimbledon just outside the relegation zone. Gills five points behind them. You could say it's a must-win game for them. And fresh from their 10-goal thriller on Saturday, Wickham host Wigan. A win for Wigan could take them to within three points of leaders. Rotherham, while oh, Wickham need the points to keep themselves in the top six. Any standout games for you, chaps? Wickham, Wickham, Wigan, that's top game, isn't it? At the top of the table. Jake, Sunderland and Burton. Yeah. I think Sunderland have got a little bit of a reputation of slipping up, so it's interesting to see how they do at this time of the season. Ipswich, like I said before, been on a good run. And obviously Cholton, MK. Obviously we're not where we want to be, but on any day we can give any side a, a very good game, so I, I'd say that's a standout. Seven of the top nine won on Saturday, but Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday... It's, it's a big week, isn't it? Yeah, and, and listen, when we was being really optimistic, we looked at these run of games, didn't we? Because you could be taking points off of teams that we want to catch. We haven't um, taken any. And we haven't, no. And we are in, obviously, a bad run. So, tonight, is, it's going to be tough for us, I think. You know, we've still got the same problems. Perhaps it's been disrespectful, a little bit, lack of firepower up top. It's not just their, it's not just their fault, the boys that, you know, burst down and echo are playing up there. Mm. It's up to the rest of them to chip in and, you know where we're going to get a goal from because if we concede it's, it's going to be a real if we concede first it's going to be a real downer so there's a lot of pressure on the boys tonight it is difficult isn't it when you've got three of your star strikers out yeah i think it'd be difficult for anybody um obviously mace has come in and done unbelievable but it's a lot of pressure in his first season leco probably more naturally a wide player playing up there so you're relying on two players are not that experienced are playing up top mm. um, so yeah it's a very difficult situation and obviously where we struggled at the start of the season it's probably putting more and more pressure on every single game so we, if we're not going to score many goals we need to make sure we're solid at the back don't we yeah absolutely and and you know we had the problem up until the weekend with set plays and uh, you know letting too many set plays in and it looked like the ball over the top was causing us all sorts of problems uh, uh, on Saturday with Taylor and people running in between our three centre-backs and they was getting there first mm. and suddenly causing us problems. So be interested to see if we can arrest that tonight. OK, well, more on today shortly, but let's go to club news updates now, shall we? And we start with ticketing news. Saturday aside, we've been in great form here at the Valley under Jacko and tickets for our upcoming home matches against Sunderland and Gillingham next month are now on general sale while seats for our fixture against Burton will be available from Thursday. Just head to booking.cafc.co.uk to secure yours now. Streaming news next and a reminder that you can watch tonight's game live on Charlton TV anywhere in the world. 
So if you're watching us on social media and haven't got your match pass yet, then get it now, please. You can get it for just a £10, caefc.co.uk. Just a reminder, on Saturday, the game against Sheffield Wednesday will only be available to live stream outside of the UK and Ireland, and that is due to EFL broadcasting rules. Well, at half-time of Saturday's show, we'll be chatting all things Charlton with the club's Dubai Addicts supporters group live on Zoom. I'd like to encourage, again, to any overseas supporters who want to get in touch with Charlton TV to speak to Curves and myself, just email fans at cafc.co.uk. We would love, love to chat to you. Well, Jonathan Lecco and Alicia Salula recently caught up with the teen addicts for an exclusive Q&A on Zoom. That was hosted by our very own Charlton TV's Charlotte Richardson. And the duo fielded all sorts of questions with the teen addicts learning all about Jonathan's culinary skills, while Alicia discussed balancing her university studies with professional football. For more information on the club's membership packages, please visit memberships, memberships at cafc.co.uk. OK, we're pleased to announce that the club's annual pitch hire period will return in May, giving supporters the opportunity to take to the hallow turf here at the Valley. The package gives you access to both the home and away dressing rooms, the players' tunnel and both dugouts, as well as use of one of our lounges for two hours post-match. To book your slot, please contact our events team at events at cafc.co.uk or call 0208 4040. Well, supporters are reminded they still have a chance to win a unique piece of Charlton history for just a fiver, thanks to legendary football commentator Clive Tilsley. He spent over 20 years as ITV senior football commentator and produced a retrospective commentary chart for the club's iconic playoff victory over Sunderland in 1998. The frame chart previews the greatest game in incredible detail, and what's more, one copy of it has been signed by our very own Alan Kerbishley. Have you got ready to sign it yet? No, but I will do. <laughs> you will do. I'll get Reed to he sign. He will it. get Peter Reed to sign. Fans can enter an online charity raffle to win the chart, with entries priced at just five pounds each. All proceeds raised from the raffle will be donated to Prostate Cancer UK, a great cause. <coughs> and you can purchase your raffle tickets now by heading to cafc.co.uk. Finally, the club's annual Upbeats Walk will return on Saturday, April the 23rd, ahead of our final home game of the season against Shrewsbury Town. After two years of running the event virtually, it's great news that this year we'll be welcoming people back for a nine-mile walk from the club's Sparrows Lane training ground to the Valley. Those of us who are unable to join in person can complete the walk virtually from anywhere in the world. This year's fundraising target is £30,000. Entry is free for all participants, but we do ask all supporters to try to fundraise a minimum of £100 if you can, if doing the walk in person, or £10 if completing the walk virtually. The Upbeats programme wouldn't be possible without the generosity of Charlton supporters. So if you are able to, please make a donation. Just head to cact.org.uk for more information. OK, Charlton are in Vitality Women's FA Cup action on Saturday and when they host the WSL outfit Everton at the Oakwood. And Charlotte Richardson talked to Captain Lauren Bruton, pitch side a little earlier. Thank you, Scott. I'm delighted to be joined by Lauren. Thanks for, for coming on Charlton TV again, Lauren. The team are on a fantastic run at the moment. Ten unbeaten, eight clean sheets as well. What's it like being a part of the team when you're on such a good run? Oh, this is when everyone obviously enjoys football, when, when you're on a great run, when you, the team's doing well, people are playing well as a collective. So, yeah, it, it's great to be a part of it. It's just obviously keeping that consistency going. Um, obviously, we've got the FA Cup coming up this weekend, which we still want to bring that consistency into as well. I think we've got a good chance. Um, but, yeah, it, it's a good camp to be around at the minute. So. And you mentioned the FA Cup. We host Everton at the weekend. They, of course, compete in the FA Women's Super League, a, a division above, but a really good opportunity to cause a cup upset. Yeah, 100%. I think with the FA Cup, men or women's football, anything can happen. Um, we're on a great run at the minute. Um, it was a bit disappointing to draw with Coventry um, before the international break. But no, look, the girls are still confident. We're buzzing for the weekend. Um, everyone wants to play some of the best teams, some of the best players. 
Um, but no, we're really looking forward to it. I think we've got a good chance. You've definitely got a good chance. And, and we were talking about Everton and the world-class quality that they've got, but the team have confidence, which is such a valuable thing going into an FA Cup diet because it's 90 minutes. Who knows where it could go? No, exactly. And I think looking at Everton at the minute, obviously they're... A, where they probably don't want to be in the league at the minute. Um, they're not getting the results that they want. They might have a little bit of lack of confidence as well. Um, so hopefully we can kind of pounce on that at the minute. Um, and yeah, look, you just wait and see what happens in the FA Cup. You never know. And for you personally, it's great to see you back out on the pitch. You, you've recovered from that injury. How are you enjoying your football? No, I'm enjoying being back in with the girls, being trying to get fit, stay fit. Um, that's the main goal for me, help the girls as much as I possibly can. Um, but no, it's, it's nice being back out on the pitch. Every footballer doesn't want to be inside in the gym. They want to be out kicking a ball about. So no, it's great at the minute and I'm loving it. So It's a relatively young Charlton squad full of talent and, and fearlessness to a certain degree. But when you've got a big cup game like Sunday, will you be looking to utilise your experience to kind of help keep it calm and, and get the game off to a good footing? I think so. I think there's a lot of experience in the team. Don't get me wrong, we have got a really young squad, but we've got a lot of older girls as well. The likes of Follis, uh, Emma Follis, Becky Jane, uh, Lois Roach as well has played abroad. She's played against some top teams as well. Um, so, yeah, we've got a lot of experience, but I, I believe in the young girls as well. I think if Kira Skills, Mia Ross, people like that, that they played in big games for youth age groups at England. So they've played in big games, they've played against top players. So I think they'll be fine now. I think they'll enjoy it. And we know that the Oakwood welcomes Charlton fans week in, week out. But for anyone that perhaps hasn't watched the team so far this season or is thinking about coming down on Sunday, how much will that support mean to you and the girls? Oh, we'd absolutely love it. I think we've really made the VCD home for us at the minute. We've got a really good uh, home record. Um, but it would be really nice to see a lot of fans down there to support us and it, hopefully it's nice weather and it'll be a really good turnout for us, hopefully. OK, well, thank you so much. Best of luck to you and the girls for that FA Cup tie. No, thank you very much. There you go, Scott. You've heard the skipper's orders. Make sure you get to the Oatwood on Sunday for that massive FA Cup tie. The skipper says so. We've got to get there. Um, the gaffer's doing really well as well, isn't yeah. she? She's uh, in the frame. The manager of the month. Are you going to vote for it? <laughs> It's a bit tough, isn't it? You're it's not allowed to say. <laughs> I can't tell you what I voted for. <laughs> Does that mean he didn't? <laughs> uh, it would be great, though, wouldn't it, to have a to great cup run? They're doing so well in the league. Teams had a great run. What's the, what's the crowds like? Has they been picking up? Do you know? I don't know. No. Perhaps we should go down there one, one Sunday. Let's do it. Let's hey? do it. Take the cameras. Do the show from there. That'd be fun. Yeah. And then we go to Hunty's place. For it in Belize? Yeah. <laughs> It was difficult enough getting Mark Fish as well on Saturday. Oh, I watched that again, I watched Andy again. Oh, forget what you were South saying, Africa. we're just looking at the venue. <laughs> anyway, let's move swiftly on, shall we? Let, let's, let, Jake, let's talk to you about, about your injury and how things are going at the moment. It's been over nine months now, hasn't it, since, since the injury. Tell us about how the re rehab's gone. Yeah, it's gone really well. It's been, it's been slow. Um, but when I did the injury, the surgeon said it was a nine to 12 month injury. So. Yeah, it's been slow, but that's sort of behind me now. Um, the medical team and the sports science team have done amazing. I'm at a place where I feel fit, strong, and I'm back training with the lads. So. Well, yeah, I, I, because we're, we're watching you here doing a little bit of work, and you know, I, I know what it's like from personal experience coming back from injury. There's a straight running, then there's the twisting, and then there's the, the ball kicking as well. But you're actually training with the lads at the moment. Yeah, obviously, this is just stuff that, I'm do that I was doing on my own. A little bit of reaction stuff there but i'm back in with the ads now so so that's nice and obviously it's just about finding your feet then yeah. after that i'll be looking to get some minutes with the the other 23s that was a bit of a right swinger right, right foot, right foot yeah he's been practicing his right foot while he's been away <laughs> well, if that one's as good as me left i'll be all right i think <laughs> you would be all right and look you've, you faced a similar spell out as well didn't you what was it 2018 19. has it been harder easier have you been able to use that as experience or second time you're just like oh Go through this again. <laughs> a little bit. It's it's hard. Obviously, missing, like I said before, missing one game's tough. But when a surgeon says to you you're gonna be out for nine months, it's a tough pill to swallow. But having gone through the experience before, it's made it easier because I know each stage and I know what's coming. Um, but but missing games of football as a professional footballer is is tough. Normally you kind of you're able to get away for a couple of weeks as well, aren't you? Not, I suppose you weren't even able to do that. What's happened with COVID? I think, yeah, I did get away. I think I did got you? one week. Yeah. yeah. Um, Where'd you go? Cyprus. Nice. Yeah. What was that? 
I think I might win away again, actually. Did you? A couple of yeah, cheeky I'm ones. making it sound like it's just a holiday. <laughs> I've been working really hard to get back. Um, no, we know what it's like because it is really hard coming back. And look, when your star player is injured, Curbs, from a managerial point of view, how difficult is it to sort of keep your spirits up? Or are you one of those managers where, if you're not in the team, I'm not going to talk to you? No, no, I wouldn't like that. No, no, you, you understand the, the, the frustration. And, you, and I think it's a little bit different now because the, the staffing levels, the, you probably could have a physio to yourself for most of the time, or you know, or one to one. Not, you know? not so much. Not so much this level. Um, obviously, when you're probably a little bit higher in the uh, higher end of the championship or the Premiership, you'll probably get that. But the medical team at Charlton is amazing. They've been amazing with me, and um, like I said, they've got me to a place where I feel really fit and strong. Mm. It's now, can I find my feet again? And the only way to do that is going in with the lads and. And getting taken out. Absolutely. Uh, tackles. We were saying a little yeah. bit earlier, though, know, that, you know, just laughing about Huntley. When we lost Huntley, you know, 25 goals he scored, mm. didn't he? And, and suddenly you lose him. Obviously, it's devastating for the player, but for the team as well, it's, it's, it's a big blow. And obviously, the player. Well, it, we were waxing lyrical, we're not just yeah. saying it because he's here, but he, he was superb before he got injured, wasn't yeah. he? How, how big a blow has, he, has that been to the team? Well, I think that they've tried to replace some of a couple of players, haven't they? You know, like Elliot on loan. I mean, you'd prefer to play as a number 10, wouldn't you? Or... No, no. Uh, to be fair, I'd, I'd play anywhere in midfield, but... But there's been a couple of players. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. I got injured. When I, when I came to Charlton, we won promotion into the Premier League, uh, and I'd, I'd done my Achilles. Mm. And when I came back, Andy Peake was signed and, and uh, Steve McKenzie. Mm. You know, so suddenly I've got a bit of a problem. I've helped them get promotion and then I've got to try and get back in the team. Do you want to wait for you or what? Wait, wait, no, no, I think that's again is, is like the experience when you've gone through it. I've, I've had that experience of going from the top of the pile to the bottom. Yeah. And again, I've gone from the top of the pile to the bottom, but you know what's coming, so I know I've, how to climb up and how and to get back. So. You know the club had to do something. Yeah. You're out for a year. They've had to try and bring someone in or bring a couple of players in to replace you. And uh, now he knows he's got the competition which I'm sure he's up for as well. Uh, and you've been doing some coaching in the meantime, haven't you? How's that been going? Yeah, been going really well. I've been uh, coaching with the younger age groups, the 14s, 15s, 16s. It's just, it's just nice, obviously, to focus on tank else, not yeah. just rehab every single day. So it gives me another focus and, and also learn the game as well. So it's been really nice to see some, uh, some of the young talent that we've got because we've got some really good players. What have you learned? What have I learned? Yeah. Just different, all aspects of the game. I think when you put your coach, well, you all know more coach. than me, but coach is that how on. You see the game slightly different. And the other thing I've learned is how annoying players can be at times. <laughs> so I'll probably be a bit nicer from now on. <laughs> no, you <laughs> won't. The <laughs> thing is, no, that, and you'll find this, because you, you're young enough and still playing, you can demonstrate. It's when you can't demonstrate anymore, you know, what you want. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you just can't quite get it. Yeah, <laughs> it's easier. It's easier when you can demonstrate. Absolutely. Is it something that you, you kind of always wanted to do, or are you just doing it as a little bit of something different at the moment? Take your mind off it, as you just said, or would would you like to become a, a coaching I've, manager? I've always thought about it. Probably, um, I probably thought about it too early, um, but I've always wanted to go into that side of the game, whether it be coaching or management. But obviously having injuries, I think it pushes you a little bit quicker. So maybe I've done, because I'm on my A at the moment, maybe I've done that a little bit quicker than I would have. But it's, it's a good thing because football does stop at some stage. That's so nice to, to know what you want to go into. It's good that you can see the future and it's important in that sense, isn't it? You, 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 you were a pretty decent coach and Yeah, manager. but it's good, it's good that you can do it while you're still playing. A lot yeah. of players leave it too late yeah. and then suddenly the, the career's over and they can't get that step in, you know, so... It, Quick, learn uh, the quicker you can get on the ladder and get them get that experience and the badges. You can't you can't go into it without any experience. You need you need to put sessions on and they're no good. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the I was players, no good when I first started. So I know. And, the, and the players like just don't respond to it. Mm. And you know and how to organise yourself and how, you know and, and and make sure it progresses the session. So at the end they've got they've got what you're after. You know, so it's great that you're doing it now while, yeah. you, while you can have a go. And you were coached by Brownie as well, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Do you remember? Yeah, I was. What was he like? To be honest, I didn't have him for that long. OK. But I do remember having an argument with him, I think, the first game. So 
No, he, that's unless not unusual. Listen. Oh, that's not unusual. Let me tell right, you. Did he have an argument with you, or did you have an argument with him? I think I was a bit leery back then. Oh, yeah. but, um, no, I do remember having that argument in the first game. But obviously, Brownie knows his stuff. He was he was good. But I I was uh, I was pushed forward um, when I was at Brighton, so I didn't spend that long with him. Well, we want you fit and playing here well before you start thinking any more seriously about coaching. So, Jake, good to have you with us. Um, let's look ahead, or look back, shall we say, because we kind of have to, to the Oxford game. We started off so well as well. I mean, did you really see what was uh, about to unfold? Well, we, it was end-to-end end stuff, it was end to end stuff wasn't it? The first 20 minutes was end-to-end end and we didn't get a goal. And we just make a couple of mistakes. That's a little bit lucky. And then Ben just overcovers. It's a terrific finish. I mean. There were some terrific goals there Saturday, weren't there? And that was one of them. That was, that was the only place it could go. And uh, we then we was on the end of some really good finishes after that. Jake, it was only three days ago. What's been said at training since the game? From the gaffer, it was, let's move on, show uh, we know what we've done wrong. Let's just show our reaction to the fans. Uh, it's a quick turnaround. So it was just about moving on, really. and. And can we show that reaction that's, that's needed after a, a performance at home like we showed the other day? Yeah, Cubs, we know all about you as a manager, but you must have been on the end of some heavy defeats as oh, well. Yeah. How yeah. do you prepare for the next game so quickly? Well, I'd have preferred a week off, to be honest. Um, but you know what? I, I said it on Saturday. If you're Jacko, you don't come in and rant and rave. You know, everyone's had a bad day. What's the use of ranting and raving? Let's be positive and, and, and try and pick ourselves up for the up-and-coming game. I mean, this is another blow because Claire's been doing very well yeah. as the third centre-back and, you know, three games. I didn't think he wanted a red card myself. Um, but that was the frustration, I think, from what was happening on the day. But, no, no, I'm sure Jacko never got much sleep Saturday night and coming Sunday, he's got, you know, he's got to pick the boys up. Perhaps Skiverton's had to pick him up a little bit because... Uh, you know, it was a big defeat and it could have been a bit worse. But there's an opportunity now to turn it around again and, and, and pick the three points up. But, you know, I, I think that when you're a young manager especially, um, you know, you, you want it to go as well as it can, but, you know, on Saturday it just got worse and worse and worse yeah, as, a, as the 90 minutes yeah. progressed. How, how difficult is that to stop? Even if you know you're not going to win the game, I think, you, you just don't want to end up... I think, not 4-0. Not, not to go too negative, you know, like we mentioned what the, the great Bobby Robson said to me once, you know, we was talking about a manager that lost six games on the spin and he said to me, what would you do in the next game? And before I could answer, he said, I play 11 defenders and I won't get beat just to stop the rot. Um, but sometimes that can be too negative. If you go that way and still get beat, then where, where are you left? You know, so it's a difficult decision and he's learning on his feet, Jacko, mm. you know. what? I don't know how many games he's had, but, but what a run, you know. Caretaker manages seven wins out of, what, nine or ten, then can't win a game for four or five, then win three and then lose four. You know what I mean? So he's he, learning a lot then. Uh, and that grey hair's coming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got, They're slowly got, coming got in grey hair. You, you'll be having a few greys as well <laughs> in the future, Jake. And a lesson from Sir Bobby Robson already there. Coaching lesson. Learning all the time. Learning all the time, absolutely. OK, Jacko made five changes in tonight's starting 11. One of them is Sam Lavelle, who I caught up with a little earlier. Sam, you're back in the sides since your injury for the first time end of October. How pleased are you to be back? And, and how has your rehab gone? Um, yeah, firstly, the rehab's gone, gone well. Um, I got injured at Sunderland away in October, and he said 12 weeks. So I worked hard with my physios. Adam Cole did great with me, uh, the head physio. Got back in about 10 weeks, um, but the lads have been doing great since I come back. Maybe not the last few weeks, but initially in January they're doing well, so I had to buy my time a bit, get match fitness and wait for my chance, and, and tonight's my chance, so yeah, ready to go. Unfortunately, you're coming into the side where it's going through a little bit of a tough patch, or certainly uh, after the weekend as well. I mean, you actually dealt with the, the tough spell under Nigel extremely well. So how do you as a group of players turn things around? I think we've just got to go back to basics, really. Um, and the basics being hard work and resilience and sticking together and not, not hiding from the ball and not shying away from a tackle off the ball as well. So um, just the basic hard work and, and covering for your mate, really. And I think we've got characters in there that can, can bounce back, so we need to show it tonight. You were captain at Morecambe, of course. So 
even though you're new to this club, do you feel like you're already one of the leaders and you have to show leadership, leadership skills yourself? Um, I fancy myself as a leader, yeah. Possibly not playing the last few months is taking a hit on that, really, because I can't be as vocal as I maybe would have liked. But um, once I get more games under, under my belt, I definitely will be one of the, the loud ones in the change room, I suppose. Um, on the pitch, I like to communicate and organise and things like that. So, yeah, I think in time I'll be, I'll be more of a leader, but I think tonight and the next few weeks is just about getting back to my best, really. You're coming into some game, aren't you? MK Dons, yeah. they're in great form at the moment. One, are you looking forward to it? And two, what are you expecting from them? Looking forward to it, yeah, definitely. It's been a, obviously been a while, so I can't wait to get back out there, um, especially at home. The first start at home will be, will be nice. Um, we're expecting a tough game, really. We've, we've seen a lot of them this week on the, on the video, and uh, they're a good side, but great opportunity to show that we can perform against the best tonight and, and we can bounce back, so I think that's more important than bouncing back. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Hey, he speaks really well, doesn't he? I mean... Good to see him back, yeah. I, you know, and, and you know, I've been saying that perhaps well, where we are in the league, it may be time to, to blood a few youngsters. Perhaps it's not with the run we're having, but when you find yourself where we are mid-table, it is an opportunity for, for the manager to put some young players in, but also an opportunity to get him fit, because yeah. we know he's going to be around next year and he's going to be one of the centre-halves. So he needs to get fit and stay fit till the end of the season. What's he like as a lad? Yeah, really good character uh, to have in the dressing room. Obviously, he's had a bit of an interrupted start to his Charlton crew with that injury. Um, but he's a great lad to have in the train uh, in the changing room. So I'm looking forward to him coming back, and, and hopefully he can nail down a starting spot. I have to say, uh, the whole team was under pressure under Nigel, and he dealt with it well. And he's coming into a, a tough game off the back yeah. of what happened Saturday, and MK Dons are a third. But unaffected. He's not been playing in it, has he, for the last whatever, but he's certainly not in the, the three or four games that we've lost. And he'd be, just be happy that he's back fit. Um, you know, and one or two players now have come in that, you know, either need to prove to the manager they want to be here next year. It's a great opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, or, or, you know, and we need him to stay fit. I, I, didn't, I didn't ask, because I don't, I don't know, what is the injury to Innes? Because he looked like he was limping a little bit, we were saying during the game. What's, what has he done? I don't necessarily know what he's done. They, they were having a look at him today when I was right. uh, training, but I don't know. But going back onto Sam, he's he's a lad who's got a good mentality. He uh, he definitely won't shy away from from uh, a chance like this. So he's not been playing, has he? So he's coming in nice and fresh and unaffected. So you know, two changes at the back. Tell us more about Juan Castillo then. Well, I haven't seen a lot. I haven't seen a lot because obviously I've only just started training again, but. Like I said, he's definitely a confident lad. <laughs> he, uh, he's got some good dance moves. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I haven't seen a lot. He looks very athletic, gets forward well. I'm interested just to, to see a bit more. It's, it's hard, obviously, I've only been training a couple of days, so yeah. you can't see too much, but, but I'm sure he won't shy away as well. And, no. a, and another one unaffected, if you like, you know? So, you know, there's some plus points into making that many changes. We've been quite, quite often having a, a winger in a left wing back position, aren't we? I think left wing back, from what I hear, suits him perfectly, yeah, yeah. but he, yeah. he's not an out and out winger, is he? So hopefully defensively he should be okay. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as we've said on a couple of occasions tonight, we've got tough opposition. Yeah. So we've got to step up and uh, we need a decent start and it'd be nice to score first. Mm. Let's have a look at uh, today's team then, shall we? It is five changes in total, as I said earlier. Uh, Chris Gunter, Sam Lavelle, Akin Femro, Juan Castillo and Mason Burster comes in. Good to see Daniel Carnu and Tyrese Campbell on the bench. We'll have to wait and see if they get minutes on the pitch. Elliot, uh, DJ and then there's Piercy and Ben as well. Uh, uh, what about the balance of the team, Curbs? Do, do you yeah. like it? Yeah, it was obviously similar to, to the way we've been playing since Shaco took over, really, three at the back. The midfield three stay the same. Um, got out of gunned a little bit, I think, on, on Saturday. Um, but it's trying to get some service to the two boys up top, isn't it? And yeah. create some chances. Um, that's what we need to do. And you've been telling us, Jake, as well, that probably 70%, 80% of the training has been working on the back five and defensive situations. Yeah, the other day was just all about being solid, being compact. I think you can tell with the, the team that's been selected, it's, they're all natural defenders. So it's probably 
slightly more defensive, but I still think we've got enough firepower to to cause them problems going the other way. It's like what Curb said, it's, it's about getting the first goal and then and then building on that. Yeah, maybe he's been listening to Sir Bobby Robson. <laughs> Being a bit more defensive. Just thinking that, you know, when, when Jacko took over his first game when he was away to Sunderland, how many players are out since them games? You know, it's five or six players must be yeah. missing. Well, I mean, especially at this level as well, when you've got mm. your, your top three strikers out, yeah. it's difficult, isn't it, for a manager? And you're talking, I suppose, Innes, Claire, who's been playing every, every game. You know, you're talking about five or six players out from when he first took over. Mm. How important is it as well to, he seems to like the 3-5-2 formation, he's a young manager, he could sort of think, oh well it's not worked, I'll try and change formation, yeah, to stick what he believes in. He changed it once in away from home and to try and get us back in the he game. He can change it during a game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean I always had that opportunity because I had players, Herman Wrightson could play as a centre-half or a third centre-half but could go left back, Fishy could play a third centre-half and go right back. So always the opportunity to change during our games, uh, depending on how the, how the game was going. OK, let's have a look at the MK Dons team then, shall we? And they are doing so well at the moment. Scott Twine, he scored 13 goals, he's their top scorer. And, you know, you, you've got to say, Liam Manning has done a fantastic job in, in getting them up because they are the unfancy team, really, Curbs, aren't they? Well, they are. And, um, you know, I think that their manager left, didn't he? He went to, went to Swansea, didn't he? And, yeah. uh, you know, there was a change there. And Liam Manning's done fantastic since then. Troy and Parrott's a big talent. Connor Wickham's vastly experienced. A bit like, bit like Stockley, yeah. if you like. Josh McEachern's been around yeah. a bit as well, hasn't he? Big target man, Josh McEachern, yeah. He was at Brentford, Chelsea, then Brentford. Yeah, so they've got some experience in there, but you know, you don't get into the top three or four no. you know, and, and stay there if you've not got something about you. So we've got a difficult game on our hands again tonight. Absolutely. They've won four of six. It's one defeat in 12, so it looks like defensively and going forward, yeah, yeah. we've got the balance right. So, so what's the mentality here, after, especially after what happened on Saturday? Well, I think the players to be as confident as they can in terms of give it to people that's marked. Don't take the easy option and put it into space and, and, and you know, play the way that you want to play. And I would like to get the centre-halves higher up the pitch so we can perhaps pen them in. I don't think Conor Wickham's the greatest with pace and whatever, but I don't know about so many other players, but if we can pen them in and get our better players in the final third, so we can create something. That's our biggest problem tonight, I think, creating something. Jake, you, you feeling it? You want to be out there? I'd love to be out there. It's just, going back onto that, it's just about showing character again. I think if we can get after this MK side, then we'll, we'll give them a good test, but if we give them time, they've got some seriously good players. I've played with Josh. If you give him time, he can he can really hurt you. They've got good experience as well. It's it's going to be a tough af afternoon if we don't get close to them. He came through the ranks at Chelsea, Josh McEachern, didn't he? So he's certainly a big, yeah. big talent. Good night for for Mason to make even more of a name for yeah. himself, isn't I it? Mean, I mean, to be to be honest, if he hadn't been transferred to Chelsea, well, you'd be putting him in anyway now, wouldn't you? To blood yeah. him for us, yeah. you know. So um, you know, and he needs games. I mean, he came on and made a little bit of a difference, didn't he, the weekend? So uh, let's see if he can nick us a goal. I know you like to watch the warm-ups of the opposition team as yeah, well. What do you weigh them? I didn't see too much, but they look a big, strong side, and they say they must be full of confidence to run their on. But you know, we're at home, and you know, we've got to go out and show a little bit of character, I think, as we said. It's easier said than done. And the fans, they don't look a great crowd. No. The fans, can they get behind us and give us a bit of a lift? Well, if they haven't turned up here at the Valley, hopefully they're watching and paying the £10. Remember, anywhere in the world, the UK and Ireland, we are live streaming tonight. So please, uh, just £10 it is uh, to watch this game, where hopefully we'll come away with all three points. Let's get to our commentary team of Terry Smith, Greg Stubbley and Stevie Brown. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Herbs. And yes, welcome to the Valley, everybody watching around the world. And it's, uh, well, 